Welcome to Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. I'm Mary Winkenwarder. The selfie has become a pop culture sensation by mortalizing the way we look at any given moment with a simple snap and click. Taking this a step further, would you ever use a selfie for a plastic surgery consultation? There is one Miami plastic surgeon who will sometimes accept a selfie during a consult. Joining us this episode is Dr. Michael Salzhauer to share with us more about why. Dr. Salzhauer, welcome to Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. Thank you for having me. It's so great to have you. Yeah, so the selfie phenomenon has definitely led to an increase in plastic surgery across the world, and certainly down here in Miami. Um, every patient that I see these days, almost within the first five minutes of the consultation, will whip out their phone and start showing me the pictures of themselves that they don't like or what they don't like about their body that they saw in some, some angle somewhere that they took on Instagram. So um, it certainly led to an increase in awareness of how people see us and how we actually look. And, uh, you know, if you connect the dots, that kind of leads to the plastic surgeon's office if you want to fix those things. Sure, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of people that come in, I would say 20 to 25 percent come in because they just don't like a particular picture that they've taken and they think they need plastic surgery, but really they don't. I um, mean, you know, sometimes a bad picture is just a bad picture. Right. Um, but, but selfies have definitely, uh, you know, made us more aware of how we look. And, uh, you know, when I, I can, I, I'd say it like this. You know, I'm lucky if there are 50 pictures of me from birth to age 15 in my parents' house somewhere. But right. my 15-year-old daughter probably took 50 pictures of herself yesterday, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there's, there's a generational thing as well. Um, you know, and also video allows you to see angles of yourself that, you know, in motion. And so we, we're, we definitely can't fool ourselves into thinking we look any better than we actually are. And right. Then do, um, well, and, you know, not surgery can sometimes fix those things. Well, I'm curious, what are some of the more popular selfie enhancement requests during a plastic surgery consult? Somebody okay. walks into your office with their phone or their Android tablet and, you know, they want to enhance something? What do you see more of than anything else? Um, so mainly noses. Okay. Um, because, you know, when you look, when you look in the mirror, you know, we kind of, um, we, we see ourselves basically this way. We Very rarely do we see our profile. Right. Until the age of the selfie. Now we see ourselves from every single angle possible. And a lot of people feel like they can improve their profile, their nose, or they feel like their nose is too wide for their face, um, and that sort of thing. So that's the, that's the number one Selfie-induced surgery, rhinoplasty. On the other hand, um, of course, you know, when you go to the beach nowadays in the summer, people take pictures of each other and themselves, you know, in their bikinis and whatnot, and they start to notice, you know, the butt is not as perky as it used to be, or the breast, right. or whatever, that sort of thing as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's all of it. That's amazing. So how do you determine when to turn away a patient when presented with a selfie for any type of procedure? Okay, so we, first and foremost, you know, when you when you look at somebody, um, what what and what a lot of people don't know is that sometimes people look way better in person than they do in pictures. Right. And that's not that's not just a myth. That's a fact. It, it has to do with the fact that pictures are two dimensional and people are three dimensional. Um, and I know some very very pretty famous supermodels that really look kind of okay in person. Now they are they're gorgeous. They're definitely above average, but they don't look nearly as good as they do in their pictures. And it has to do with the fact that they have, you know, angular jaw lines and, you know, mm -hmm. cheek features and that sort of thing. 
which in photographs looks way, way better than having, you know, a sort of rounder feature. So um, sometimes people come in and they're just showing me a bad picture of themselves. There really is no bump in their nose. Their, their nose really is not too wide through their face. And so I can sort of gently, um, you know, show them pictures and actually just hold up a mirror from different angles and measure and say, look, your nose is not too big for your face. Um, your, your, your waist is fine. You don't need any liposuction. And sort of talk them out of the tree. Uh, because a lot of times, by the time they come to a plastic surgeon's office, they're convinced they need a rhinoplasty, but really they don't. And then there's a small percentage of patients that have body dysmorphic disorder where they actually see things that aren't there. You know, they, they have this, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly common psychological phenomenon where you blow a minor, minor deformity out into this giant thing and it can interfere with their daily lives. And in those patients, surgery rarely helps and they're referred to psychiatrists or psychologists to help them get over those issues. Um, sure. So if you, if you take all those types of patients, you end up with, you know, 20, 25% that really don't need plastic surgery at all. Um, the other thing that's interesting about the selfie generation and the selfie age is that, um, and I'm sure we've all done this, I only put my very best pictures on, right. my very <laughs> best pictures on Facebook and Instagram, and it right. gives this illusion of like, wow, we're, we're, we're living in the most beautiful society of all time. I mean, right. There's no bad looking people anywhere on Instagram or Facebook. So that also makes us a little bit self conscious because we're, you know, well, we, we think we're, we're less, sometimes we think we're less attractive than we are based on the relative beauty of people who really put their best, best pictures up. So all those things factor into it. Wow. So if a patient is serious about an enhancement procedure, what kind of photo or series of photos do they need to bring in and how can they accurately view themselves for a proper assessment? That's a great question. That's a great question. So, the, so here's what here's what you should do. Take a picture if you're if you're talking about your face and really your body as well. You want to take a picture from the front, directly straight on, like a mirror shot. Boom. Then you want to take a three quarters view, a side view, a complete profile. We actually turn your whole body, not just your head, side view, from each side. So you end up with five views of the face. If you want to talk about and one of the most popular procedures in Miami nowadays is the Brazilian butt lift. You want to talk about how you but from behind, so you also need those same views basically from behind as well. So you end up with like a 360 view. Um, and if you set those pictures up, it, that's the best, most accurate way to see if there really is a deformity or something that can be fixed or some aesthetic flaw that can be made better. But just one random shot, you know, that you took one night out at a bar at one o'clock in the morning and your nose looks funny or your, your lips look weird, that, that should not, you know, don't let that plant any seeds in your mind. Better right. to offer pictures and really, you know, examine it. And the other thing is, um, you know, the only way to really know is to see a plastic surgeon. Ask them what they what they think. Um, you know, board certified plastic surgeons are trained to pick up and only do surgery on patients that really need it. So they're trained to pick up, you know, cues that show that maybe this is just, you know, body dysmorphia or um, there are things there that really shouldn't be fixed and addressed with surgery. Sure. So, Dr. Salthauer, if um, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, where could they catch up with you online? Oh, I mean, it's real easy. I, I'm, I'm, the name of the practice is Bell Harbor Plastic Surgery. You just Google, you know, Miami Plastic Surgery, Bell Harbor. You can get me. Bellbody.com is my website. Um, and I've got a before and after picture gallery um, with about a thousand before and after pictures of all kinds of surgery, rhinoplasty, breast augmentation. And the, uh, the direct address for that is photosplasticsurgery.com. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really easy. Just Google me. You'll find me. Um, there's, there's loads of plastic surgeons you know, in America that are board certified, that are qualified to handle anybody. You don't, you don't have to fly to Miami for surgery. You can do it in your hometown if you, if you want to. But for sure, don't talk yourself into anything until you've had a consultation with, you know, a legitimate, board certified, ethical, professional plastic surgeon. Because, like I said, I'm not, I'm not alone. We, all of my colleagues say the same thing. We turn away a lot of patients. Um, okay. because if they don't need to have surgery, they don't need it. Um, right. So it's real important. To, and also... Um, just remember that a selfie is a selfie, and, and it's, it's not a, a it's not a measurement <laughs> of, of how uh, of how attractive you are. So there are other right. factors that go into it. Fantastic. All right, Dr. Salzhauer, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great visiting with you on the show. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Catch up with me on my blog, www.beautybeautereport.com, and on Twitter at Beauty Publicist. Everyone, thanks so much for joining us on Ultimate Skincare and Beauty Report. Have a beautiful and successful week. Mwah.
Oh, 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 oh,